Welcome back to Iris After Hours. We are here live in Africa and I'm with some amazing guys today. Firstly, Will Hart is co-hosting with me. Come on, Will. Nice. Come on. It's nice to be here. And we've got, as you can see, we've got Papa Bill. Yeah. He's flown all the way out to Africa to bless us here at Iris. Yeah. Bill Johnson, welcome to Iris nice. After Hours. Yeah, thank you. I've, I've never been. <laughs> it's during the day, but yeah, it, we're after hours. No, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. So good to have you. Yeah. Bill, I mean, what can we say? I mean, it's been a long relationship that you've had yeah. with us at Iris. It's, yeah. it's been incredible. How did it all start? I'm just curious. When did you first come, stumble across the bakers? Or how did they get on your radar? Um, we were having a real breakthrough in Reading at Bethel, and um, uh, one of our staff members went down to Southern California. They had uh, relatives or friends or whatever down there, and they went to um, SCC, I don't know what it's called now. Um, SCC. It's a uh, Assembly of God a College. Oh, and okay. Heidi was speaking at chapel, and, uh, and she just really had, of course, powerful impact. And the staff member talked to her and said, would you come to Reading and speak? She said, yes. So she just came up. Oh so the gosh. staff. To yeah, Bethel. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The staff girl called me and said, I found someone that we really need to hear. I said, all right, let's do it. So <laughs> Heidi oh, came. Oh, you are and, awesome. And so ever since then, yeah. Oh, my oh, gosh. You just said yes. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, she made, obviously, such a rich deposit. And, yeah. And then, uh, um, yeah, we actually... I was connected with Randy Clark about the same time. Oh, okay. And uh, so I ended up accidentally bringing the two of them together at one time. <laughs> and Randy had never heard the stories of the impact of his ministry to her. Wow. So I, I, had, I never have two heavy hitters like that on a Sunday. You know, I give one of them a Sunday or another one. Yeah. But I, I, uh, I, I don't remember what happened, but somehow I ended up with both of them. So on Randy, the same Sunday? On the same, yeah. So oh she spoke gosh. in the morning, Randy spoke at night, but awesome. Randy just sat there and wept yes. as he heard the stories because he saw the impact because he had, had never spent time with her. The uh, fruit from yeah. his ministry. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. wow. you know, her story, uh, the impartation, the impact of his prophetic Because he tells that everybody. story all the time oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah. so that's the first time he heard it. He yeah, heard I, it from the pulpit. I believe that's the first time he ever heard oh, the details of what had happened. Yeah, so that was kind of fun, fun to, to be wow. sitting, sitting in the grandstands and watching yeah. That game unfold, you know, was wow. pretty cool. That's yeah. the one where, do you want the nation of Mozambique? Yeah. Yep. Yep. In case yep. you don't yep. know, yeah. Gosh. Yeah, that's good. Wow. So ever since then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Will, you jump in anytime. Yeah, sure. You got anything. I, I love these stories. <laughs> like I, I know. Because this is, you know, all, all of us. I mean, I got saved around that time. Oh, that's I remember, when you got I, saved. I mean, I got saved in 99, so it was probably right around that yeah, couple yeah, years. Yeah. Like, yeah. right around that time. And I used to go and watch the video of Heidi at, at Bethel. I mean, somebody posted it somewhere on YouTube. Oh, wow. and somebody that years ago, and you can watch it. You can watch her up there, uh, oh, really? you introducing her. Oh, she's kind of laid out, she's kind of laid oh, out on the stairs oh, at Bethel. Oh, and uh, yeah, I'll have to watch Heidi that. in a pantsuit. It was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I remember those times, yeah. yeah. So when was the first trip to Mozambique? Did, oh. did, how did that eventuate? I don't ever remember. Uh, it would have been, uh, let's see, 97 is when I made connection with Heidi and um, Randy. And um, let's see, it would have been, I went with Randy to Brazil soon after that, 98 or 99. Right. And then uh, we, I started doing more things with Randy. And did you come to Maputo base at all when they were in the south? Yeah, I, I have, I've been, there. not when they lived there, but, right. we, but we stopped there. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So I didn't. I don't even remember when I first came. Sorry, bombarding you with no, details. No, that's all right. That's all right. I, I just con I made a strong connection with Randy on a regular basis. We were together yeah. somewhere, and then uh, and then I was with Randy when Heidi would come to St. Louis where he pastored. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so then made a, a, a deeper connection. Right. I don't remember the first time. It's, it's been several times. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now what I'm getting at is, there. I don't know if everyone knows this, but. We are married. There was that's, a, whoa. That's baby. That's <laughs> Iris and Bethel, that was yeah. one of the big things yeah. for me, is when I discovered you and, and Heidi and stuff, 
way back in Australia that I was on the podcast and I listened to this podcast and there was a marriage of ministries yeah. Yeah. that had never been done before. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it since. <laughs> I was just sitting in a meeting with Heidi. I think it was at uh, in Pasadena with uh, at Age Rock. I was chatting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where it was. We've, we've had several encounters through the years where we're both on the front row and and but anyway, um, this just this thought occurred to me that just sounded and felt so God, but I didn't know what it meant. So I I leaned over. I said, Heidi, I think we're supposed to have a, a marriage of ministries. And she said, Let's do it. She yeah. just was her, you know, yes. And uh, and so i still don't know what all that looks like, but we yes. we had this just this time of real covenant and yeah, and uh, you know just to to be. Um, a support, yeah, you know, but also she is to us, so it goes both ways. She's yeah, absolutely, such a gift to us. So I know. That, yeah. Well, that was, leads me to my next question. I was just wondering what, because obviously we've taken so much from from Bethel, mm -hmm. from what you guys have have, have pioneered, mm -hmm. and um, what what have you taken from Iris? What what do you feel like you've, you've received? Because <laughs> we've received so much from you. Yeah. I basically tell Heidi that whenever I hear her speak, I have to get saved again. You know, it's just nothing big. Just <laughs> yeah. she, I know. Like, you know, obviously, she and the whole team here lays down such a brilliant example of what it means to to stop for the one. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing that impacts me the most, to be honest, I love the sacrifice. I, I love that. That's a huge part of our my value system is to lay it all down to pay the price. But a lot of people that I know through the years who have laid it all down are not happy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they are they are mournful missionaries. Yeah. There, and they have reason to be. You know, I mean, if you look in the natural, my goodness, the stuff they're in the middle of is just just a bummer. Yeah. But I don't know anyone who faces more bummer, you know, than you guys here. And the joy level is so strong that that. <laughs> You know, I, the resurrections of the dead rocked yeah. me. Yeah. The the impact on uh, on uh, on people groups that have never heard the gospel yeah. rocks me. Yeah. Um, I can go through a long list of things that really mark my life, mark my thinking. But probably the thing that surprised me the most is the joy from people that have every reason to mourn instead of rejoice. Yes. And, uh, and that is is resurrection life. That is oh, that is. Yeah. Key. And it just rocks me. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Part of the, I just want to fill in because part of the marriage that's happened, and one of the great joys that I get to have because I live out in Reading because of this marriage is, is we, we have some of our, 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 our main offices are located on, on the campus, mm -hmm. on the Bethel campus. And we just, we just love being there. I, I know I've told you this in passing, but what, what, what these guys do is over the top for us. We get treated like family, we get treated like staff, we get treated, we get, we get the best of treatment. And uh, we just love being there. We love being a part That's of what cool. God's doing yeah. in Reading. Yeah. yeah. Well, we love having you there too. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. It's, both ways. Yeah. it's yeah. amazing. It's a hub of, hub of revival, hub of power. And so, it's so amazing, amazing to see how out of that, you know, we get to help serve the nations in the movement. And we're, up to, we're, we're up to almost 70 bases now around the world. Yeah. And that's actually coming out, you know, a lot of the funding, a lot of the, the work and the networking is coming out of, out of Reading. Uh, and beautiful. we just love that. Yeah, yeah. that's so amazing. We couldn't do it without you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Even from the early days. I mean, even because I did the Supernatural School at Bethel mm -hmm. in 2008. Mm -hmm. And our offices were upstairs, yeah. you know, in the building. Yeah. Yeah. And then we shifted in the area, that whole yeah. other building. And yeah. Yeah. it's been such a blessing. Yeah. But for me, I suppose one of the, the huge things for me, because we did SSM and then we reconnected with Heidi after BSSM and she said come to Africa and run the mission school we're going what? I know what? so my wife and I yeah. went from BSSM where we were very inebriated in the spirit for most of the year <laughs> um, to doing that and what we what we felt really came was the on the culture of honour yeah. in Bethel was so huge yeah. Yeah. for me and Sarah and that's I really felt that that was something that you've really brought not that we didn't have it, but there was just this increase and this practice of it that yeah. that I love. I mean, I love this, just standing up when you know so when there's a, a great speaker comes in. It's like, get, come on, Harvest School, step. Someone come and let's yeah. stand up for that. You yeah. know, just the little things like that. So that was like just huge. Yeah, so good. thank you. Yeah, goodness, you're welcome. Yeah, <clears throat> very glad. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I still can't believe I'm 
in this podcast with you, Bill. Oh, come on. It's pretty <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I, I can believe it. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> No, but because, Bill, I mean, you've... I was going to ask this. You, you are fathering... I mean, you're fathering a whole movement. I mean, Bethel's not... Is it just a church? It's, a, it's, it's almost a movement now. Or it, I mean, I'm not sure how to define it. But how do you father... Because you are a father, Bill. How do you father something like that? Is it, is, it, is it just as you grow, it's grown and you've grown and God's grown in you? Or is it, is it, is it something that, that you've, I don't know, had right from the beginning that you knew was happening? Only in part. You know, you, you, have, you, know, you see things, but you see through a glass darkly. So there's a yeah. shape of things to come, but you know, I don't think any of us ever get it to the measure that God intends. You right. know, he always surprises us. Surprised us. So there's always fulfilled expectations, but there's always way past anything we can imagine. And so we, we are in the tension of those two realities yeah. you know, right now. Um, well, the bottom line is, is that I, what, I tell our, what I tell our leaders and stuff when I'm with them, I don't, have a, uh, I don't have a dream or an aspiration to build a large ministry. Come on. To build a large church. I mean, I'm not opposed to that. Okay. I, is my, that was that important for you, or is it just it's is that important. an anomaly? It's an important. It's important for me. I don't know about anyone else. But yeah, for, for your I don't. I don't have a dream to yeah. build a big ministry, but I do have a dream to build big people. Yeah. Wow. And so that's that's my focus. Is I want I want people to step into their significance. Wow. I want people to step into who God has made them to be, and we've never seen the limit of one what one person can do that is truly surrendered, united with Christ. Uh, and so that's that's my passion. That's the you've that's done the that. Yeah, I mean, we're working on. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, Bill, this, uh, Danny yeah. Sill, yeah. Chris yeah. Valentin, yeah. I mean Dan Fairley, I mean yeah. uh, the Deadmans, yeah. like and all the the guys from New Zealand. I forget yeah. how they name the Chris yeah. and oh my gosh, and all the new ones, Ben Fitzgerald yeah, in Europe amazing. now. I mean you, <laughs> yeah. We what we do is we sell it, We do celebrate who people are. We we. Uh, we honor. We you have to be willing to confront for honor to work. Uh, honor Hang doesn't on, work. Say, say that again. If if you don't have a That's culture right. that can confront, wow. then your culture of honor is flattery. It's not honor. Wow. Real honor is concerned with destiny. Real honor believes the best, but will also speak to the weaknesses or flaws or whatever. So when we talk about this culture of honor, we're we're looking at at empowering people to step up and to become all they're supposed to be. So for that to work well, it's not by my, I, I don't create room for you to grow by my design. I create room to grow by his design in you. Hmm. And then I learn to recognize the grace that's in you. And I give you permission. Wow. So what we've done well, there's one thing I think we've done pretty good. We have a, at least a B plus. And that is we have an, a permissional culture. We give people permission and you to really become yeah. and, uh, and so because of that we have a lot of experimenting you know it's a, I, I call Bethel the big experiment and so when you have experiments you have a lot of things that don't work so yeah, you have a do. lot of failure I don't mean moral failure or ethical I mean just that didn't work uh, and that didn't work but that did and so but we're okay with that we actually by design you know there's, there's is that part of being a father I is think it, it is. Because you're with your kids, it's the same thing, isn't it? You're, I think it is. Your kids have to make mistakes. When I taught my kids to ride their bike, I took them to the park where there was a lot of grass so that when they fell, they'd fall in grass. You didn't take them to the basketball court. No, no, no. no that's right. You, 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 you try to make it to where they can fail safely. Yeah. yeah. You know? And uh, so that's, that's just what we do. We just try to create an environment where, where we can experiment, we can look at it again, see how we can do it better. And, and that's just what dads do, you know. We just, yeah. we, uh, if you go to Apple computers, which I'm a fan of, come on. <laughs> uh, they have manufacturing and they have research and development. They have two sets of values in these two parts of their company. Wow. In manufacturing, you want zero defects. Yes. Yeah, you don't want zero defects in research and development. Wow. If you don't make any blunders or mistakes, if you don't find out what won't work in research and development, then you will not tap what you can do. Wow. So it actually is written into the code that we want to see what won't work so that we end up with something that will last. Uh, and, I, and I mean, you guys proved, I mean, the impact that, that Bethel mm -hmm. Church has around the world, it's staggering. 
It really is. You can't go anywhere. I can't. I mean, I travel, and I, you can't go anywhere without hearing the music, the messages, the yeah. the, the impact. It's it's unlike anything I imagine. I mean, I, we saw a little bit with Jesus Culture, I mean, which was which came out as well, and, and of course the worship that's coming out and the messages. Very rarely do you get to see a, a, a movement that has this sort of influence around the world. Yeah. Can I? I, I have a question about that because is, if I take a step outside and I look at, okay, how did everything start? Because you, you've studied church history. I know you've gone deep in with like founding fathers and revivalists. The common thread that I see even in Iris and in Bethel was was the revival, the outbreak in Toronto. Yep. Would you yep. would you say that that was kind of that that spark that ignited? I know that oh, you've yeah. always had it, but yeah, no, no, it it was it was a huge part. Yeah, it was a huge part to just to see what God was doing there. You know, to go and receive and and come home and just pour ourselves out into. The local church there in Weaverville, where I was, where I was pastoring when I first went to Toronto. Yeah. My phone and, number's from Weaverville. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, I still kept it. I have got it in Reading and I live in LA now, but it still says <laughs> Weaverville. When I call on people, I say, hey, who's from Weaverville calling me? Yeah, I just, as, as it should be. <laughs> Come on. I just drove through there. Weaverville is yeah. a blip on the radar. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's literally, there's like yeah. one main street. I saw, I think, one or two stoplights. No stoplights. Really? No stoplights in the county. <laughs> I must have been dehydrated <laughs> stopping in the middle of the road now. <laughs> yeah, no, there really isn't. There's stop signs, but there's yeah, not okay. a stoplight in yep. the entire county. Yeah. That's almost 30 awesome. miles wide by about 60 miles wide. Yeah. Long. There's not one. Just teeny little it's place. like their last claim to fame. Right. We're not having a stoplight. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> it's, it's a stoplight in Pemba yeah. yeah, so here. That's what the first one <laughs> So they're ahead of Weaverville. Yeah, that's right. So, so re- the movement broke out yeah. in Weaverville. Yeah, it started there. Okay. It started there. The leaders in in, uh, in Bethel, the previous pastor uh, transitioned out. They were without a pastor, and they uh, liked what was happening in Weaverville. They would sneak up and see what was going yeah. on, and uh, they'd come visit. And uh, and then they they invited me to come to Reading. We had been sent out from Bethel 17 years earlier. Okay. My dad pastored there at that time, right. That's and crazy. they asked us to come back and take them other church. And so, long story short, we ended up doing that. But when we came to the church to kind of present what our vision was, you know, I, I, I told them exactly this. I said, I was born for revival. Yeah. It's not negotiable. Yeah. Revivals are messy. If you don't like that, then you don't want me. Trust me. Yeah. And I, I said, I, I live with the concept of experimenting, which means there's a lot of things that don't work. So if things have to go right every time for you, yeah. then you will not like being with me. <laughs> You know, it's just, it's part of the, the package that, I, is that I've got to, by nature, I've got to explore what's possible. Yeah. And I don't know what that is until we take some risk. And sometimes, you know, we're trying to do things that we don't know anybody doing. It right. doesn't mean no one's doing it, but, it, but, you know, in our relational connection, I don't always know, you know, who, who knows what to do here. Yeah. And so we have to just kind of create, create a framework to learn something. Yeah. And so anyway, I presented that in the churches said overwhelmingly yes. Wow. And, uh, and they, they brought us. And of course, a short time later when the Lord showed up in power, you know, it made people nervous. And yeah. So we had about a thousand people leave. But, uh, but it was, the, the, I only had How two. How many did you have left? Uh, we were left, we had, it was kept about half. Oh, wow. so, so we had, um, we went from two services to one. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great service though. <laughs> I only had two gauges on my dashboard, two things that, that would measure how we were doing and how I was doing. Uh, church attendance wasn't on there. Mm. How many meetings wasn't on there. Offering wow. sides wasn't on there. Yeah. None of those things honestly mattered in my heart of hearts. Yeah. The only t- two things that mattered was number one, did God show up? Wow. Number two, did I do what he said? Oh, if, if I could say yes, do what he said, right? yeah, if I could say yes to those two things, then it was a perfect amazing. day. And so at the end of the day, did God show up? Yeah, he did. It was amazing. Did I do what he said? Wow. Did I take the risk? Yeah, as far as I know, I did what he said. All right, it was a good day. Good. Yeah, but this family left that family. Yeah, but that's okay. I did these two things. Right. <laughs> you know, God, he did his part. He showed up. I did this. So honestly, that's all that mattered. Presence and obedience. Yep. It's totally it. So totally it. Wow. Bill, how did you define it down to those two? How, had, what was I the had, journey to get there? I had an encounter with the Lord. And uh, in which I was, I had such power going through my body, 
I had no control, control of my limbs. It's three o'clock in the morning. Yes, I've heard you talk about yep. this. I had no control of my limbs. I, I blushed. I was so embarrassed for what was happening to me. <laughs> now, nobody but Jesus even knew it. So usually you're embarrassed because somebody else sees. Yes. I was embarrassed for myself. Wow. And I, I felt my face turn red. And I had no control. And the more I tried to control, the worse it got. And, uh, and the Lord was just simply asking me one question. I had been praying for eight months. I want more of you and I'll pay any price. Wow. That's what I prayed. And so he was asking me the question. This Did is... you mean it when you said you pay any price? Yeah. And then he would show me scenes, try to teach in front of the church in that condition. And I realized there's no one there that's going to believe this is God. He was playing that? Yep. Maybe. And then I saw myself in front of my favorite restaurant in town. And I realized not only is the church going to not understand, I've got a whole city now that's going to mock me. And then I remember Jacob walked with a limp the rest of his life. Mary's the mother of the illegitimate child all of her days. So did I mean it? That's all I wanted to know. Did I mean it when I said more at any price? Because what was going on in my mind is I actually had no control. I didn't know if there were, it felt like there was so much, it sounds dramatic and forgive me for that, but it, there was so much power going through my, my being that I thought he blew a fuse. I thought. I didn't know if I would function like a normal human being the rest of my life. Wow. I actually didn't know. I didn't know if this meant I would actually be bedridden to pray the rest of my life. If well, that was this, he I said there was like an element of fear. Yeah, there. yeah. So he asked me, "Did you mean it?" And uh, after laying there twenty minutes, seeing the scenes, I said, "Yes, I'll take it." Wow. I'll take it. If I get you in the exchange, you can do anything you want. With this. Wow. And so when you when you have it boiled down to that one thing. That I did what he said. Yeah. Then nothing else really matters. Yeah. You, know, you, you die. Something dies yeah. so that something else can live. And that's what happened. Come on. Wow. It, I mean, Heidi talks about being overwhelmed. You know, God wants to know do you want the nation of Mozambique? And she right. got captured. You know, literally uh, couldn't move for seven days. You know, taken to the bathroom. You know, just laid at the altar. Just, but that similar sort of experience that, yeah. that overtaken. Death. You know, I, I, I've lost control of everything. And it's in those moments that, yeah. that God shapes people. Right. I, know, I know I had similar, similar experience. I know you've had as well. How, how like, as you, look through, as you look through history, as you look through people that, are, that aren't just talking about being a mover and shaker, but are actually the ones that are leading this movement, do you, do you see that, like, radical encounter as a must-have? Do you see it as... Like a like a like a bonus. Like where do you? Because you know you experienced him. Heidi's experienced him. Randy experienced him like that. Everybody has to experience something because power comes in the encounter. Yeah. Authority comes in the commission. All authority's been given to me. Yeah. Go. Yep. Authority's oh, yeah, yeah. in the commission. Yeah. Stay in Jerusalem. Take clothed with power. Power comes in the encounter. So everyone has to have something, but it's yeah. not always the same. You know, mine isn't the same as Heidi's, right? Or the same as Randy's, or the same as I, I did a book, Defining Moments. It's just on the encounters that changed people, yep. and it's so unique and different. You know, the second most profound encounter of my life was a revelatory encounter out of a chapter in the Bible. Come on, and the word it, of God. It's, it's affected every day of my life since then. It happened on a Thursday afternoon in May of 1979. Really? So. He spoke. He spoke to me and it changed my life. So that would that's not falling on the ground shaking, it's not right. trembling, it's not standing on your head like I right, right. any of the others, but it was it marked me for the rest of my life. So he has the liberty to, to touch us in the way he wants. Yeah. We just have to be hungry, hungry and thankful enough to appreciate what he gives us. So I would like to say yes, yeah. power and kind for everybody, but it, it comes differently. What what chapter? Isaiah what? 60. Isaiah 60. Whoa! Rise, shine. shine. Yeah. The whole chapter, verses 1 through 19, changed my life. Wow. What was the, like, what, what was in that? Thing? I saw our place in history. Okay. Wow, well, what God was going to do through <laughs> you? Through the church. Wow. The church. Yeah, rise, shine, for your light has come. Jesus is the light that enlightens every person that comes into the world. There's not another light coming. That's our chapter. Wow. Come on. <laughs> and, the, and the end result? Not the end result, but one of the things that happens is kings come to your, your light yeah. and nations to the brightness of your rising, that you have to take your place. Yeah. Not place to dominate and control, but your place 
as a representative of another world. You take your place, kings will come. Wow. Yeah, so, change my life, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, Bill, it, it, we've had the encounters and you're on the path. How do you sustain this? Because this is what I'm watching, you know. Bill Johnson has not fallen. You know what I mean? This is yeah. in a world where lots do fall, you know, and you're carrying it. And I've been watching you over the years, you know. It was 2008 and you began before that. That's what I, but you know, and now it's nine years later and you're still, everything's just still going and increasing and, and you're, I don't know, you're, you're doing it. What's the, is there a secret? What's, how do you um. keep this journey going. And you said to us when we were graduating, I want to see you in 20 years. Come and bring me in 20 years, yeah, you know? Yeah. I want to see you still on fire, you know? And I always remember that. Historical perspective. I was touched by the Lord powerfully in 1987. On my way to Toronto in 95, I said, God, if you touch me again, I'll never change the subject. What had happened is he gave us fires of revival in 87. I didn't know how to sustain it. I thought the ebb and flow was him. Okay. So I thought, I thought that a move that you of God, didn't have anything to do with it. It was all about him and not about you. Exactly. So what we found is that it says that, that God lights the fire on the altar. Yep. The priest keep it burning. So that says the fire starts. It's a God fire. Yeah. But the responsibility to maintain it is the priest. So the end of the revival is not due to God. It's due to man. So there's many things that he has ignited that it, by his intention, they were meant to increase. Yeah. He only goes from glory to glory. Of the increase of his government, there's no end. His nature is building for increase. Wow. So when they end, it's simply because, well, how does a fire die? No more fuel. Yeah. yeah. So. He's responsible for the fuel, the priest. Ex exactly. And the fuel is not substance, it's us. Yeah. Whoa. So, you know, Wigglesworth, is quoted as saying, if God's not moving in a meeting, I'll move him. Yeah. It wasn't an arrogant statement of control. He just knew the heart of God so profoundly for that gathering of believers that he would become the sacrifice that would step on the altar. Yeah. And he knew that the fire of God would then come. Come on. Wow. And so that's it, you know. Plus, and that could easily look like arrogance, but it isn't. No, no, no. If yeah, you know, yeah. if you see and you understand. No. Wow. It's, it's he knew the heart of God. He knew that God is not picky, you know, how and where he moves. He's, he's not, you know, he's not uh, stingy, he's not restrictive. He's, a, he's no respect of persons. He's the yeah. same yesterday, today, forever. So there's this blank sheet. He wants to do similar things constantly, but we restrict according to, you know, I, there's a book by William D. Ortega that basically comes to a conclusion that something like this, that, that all revivals basically end because of control. They don't end because of excess. That's the bottom line. Yeah. You know, people are so afraid of excess. Excesses, yeah, yeah, whatever that excesses. looks like. And, yeah. and we should be concerned about excesses. But historically, they don't end because of excess. They just end because of control. And so you, you've got this challenge to to how how do you let, here's the challenge, how do you let wheat and tares grow together without being <laughs> frustrated at the tares and trying to pull them up? Because if you pull them up, you'll pull up wheat. Wow. And so you have to allow the two to grow together, knowing that not everything is perfect, not everything is right, yeah. but we're going to let them grow together because wheat becomes heavy and it bows. Whoa. And tears stand up right in front. <laughs> so when, when the, the weight of fruitfulness causes a humility, then you know the difference. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So that, the whole deal is, is the is sustain. But there's another part of this. The sustaining of a move of God comes by becoming the offering. But there's, an, there's another part that we're just now finally finding language for. And uh, we don't have time for it today, but I'll mention it just enough to create okay. curiosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is, we have to know how to translate revival. Because what happens is we have, we have our experiences. Let's, yep. say, uh, let's say that, uh, that you have a certain disease and, and Heidi lays on, hands on you. You fly back five rows, you shake into the power of God for three hours, you get up without the disease. Well, that's what we want to have happen everywhere. Right. We want it at the grocery store, we want it in the mayor's office, we want it everywhere. But what happens is if that's my only concept of revival, of revival, then it is not sustainable because it disrupts 
the function of the county office, which is by God's design, has to bring order to a city. Yeah, it right. disrupts the function of a business, which God has designed to make a product for the welfare of people and to receive income and have uh, employees yeah. who can feed their families. Absolutely. So you've got this cycle of life. You yeah. have all these things that actually are, by God's design, yeah. supposed to happen in life. Yes. And if my only concept of revival is meaning seven nights a week, right? power of God, I love when I see the power of God, hear of the power of God invading yep. a store and the mall and all this stuff. We have this happen. I love that. But if that is my definition of revival, I have just then decided it will not last because it cannot last. Because it's unsustainable. It, because it, it disrupts other parts of life that God created and ordained. Yeah, right? yeah. And so you can't have one part take away from the right. other. So what that means is, as let's say that touch comes on you, you tremble under God's power for three hours, you get up and the disease is gone. How do you translate that into your responsibility as a postal worker down at the local post office? How do you translate that? That encounter with God was supposed to give you a courage to stand in the midst of opposing ideas and to be bold for things that are right. A courage confidence that God has called you and chosen you by name, you get up with a different sense of personal responsibility for the impact on a city. Mm. And what happens is you then get put into a situation where you have, maybe you have uh, people that are doing ungodly things and they're, and they're hiding it in their employment maybe. And you have this courage to speak to them where before you went down for three hours you didn't. But yeah. now you take a stand. And then what happens is you may have five people that gang up on you. They now oppose you. But because of the encounter you had with God, God it's okay. Yeah. Because you have an inner strength wow. that is not controlled by the applause of people. Right. Over time, that courage stands when everybody who opposes you falls. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, we have translated revival into a transformational influence for city. Wow. Do you understand what I, yes. so, yeah. so now we've got this challenge to translate. What does it mean? To lay on the floor. What does it mean to see the glory? Right. What does it mean to have the fire of God on my hands where disease just disappears, melts away? Right. What does that mean? Yes, I want to see that in the public place. But if that's my only concept, then I have just restricted the impact of the gospel to a city, to a season of revival, and then we return to normal. Wow. And it's translating into how does this affect everyday life? That's what sustains it. Wow. I've never even heard that before. That's amazing. I mean, so many times people get touched and they like quit. They quit their job. And right, they want to move into the, I just want to move into a prayer house for, and live exactly. my life there. Exactly. And, and, and it has all the attributes of holiness and all the attributes of something that you go, oh, yeah, let's do that. That's God. But in reality, it doesn't produce yes. much fruit. I haven't seen the people that, that do that produce yeah, amazing exactly. fruit. And then they need to be supported. So some, right, right. somebody's working at a business. Oh, right. They've had to find their, oftentimes they think of themselves as second class citizens. They're there to make money to support the people that are doing the work of ministry. When if we can change our, our perspective, the person who is called by God to do the business is as called by God as is the missionary and the pastor and the evangelist. Yeah. And so what happens then is we start erasing the line between secular and sacred, sacred mm -hmm. which means now we have the liberty to empower that per person to succeed in their business, to make money with God's permission. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will give a lot away, but can they drive a nice car? Sometimes the only place you have to influence in your community is by taking a place of excellence. Yes. And you stand in that community wow. as a person of excellence. Wow. And not knowing how to manage the material world has killed us in our effectiveness to disciple nations, right. wow. and specifically to impact the wealthy. Yeah. So yeah, the goal... You need to go to greed or you can go to excess. I mean, exactly. uh, ex oh, poverty, yeah, yeah. Poverty, right. poverty or yeah. greed. Neither are the answer. Yeah. You know, my spirituality isn't measured by what I own or what I make, but neither is it measured by what I lack. Wow. Neither are wow. fair definitions. Wow. So, so anyway, that, that means we erase that line between secular and sacred. So now we're empowering the dentist to be filled with the spirit so that the fruit of his labor is impacting people. Wow. People that are actually impacted by the presence we have, we have folks that, that uh, we have business people that call, give us first chance to fill positions at their placement of yeah. their business. 
by people who are not believers because they like the atmosphere they bring. They don't know it's the presence of the Holy Spirit. They just know they like it. Yeah. So what does that mean? It means they are being mentored to value the presence of God. They don't have a language for what they're experiencing, but they are experiencing. What does it mean? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that's if if we can if we can translate, this is how it looks like in business, in the medical community, right. in entertainment, right. in all these realms. This is what it looks like. Then it's sustainable, because now. The other parts of life that God also has ordained has permission to succeed. Yes. And if, if, you, if you get that, then, then it's sustainable. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be a book, I think, yeah. <laughs> This is a book, for well, sure. A part of it's in a book. The power that changes the world. Oh, okay. The power that changes the world is already, already, already dead a good part of it. But yeah. Now, the translating revival will have a whole new level on that one. But yeah. Do, yeah. Do, do, right. do you have any new books you're working on that you might want to just. Give I, us a little. I do, but I'm so late on it. I'm, okay. only, I'm only about seven months late, not six months late. Okay. But, yeah, I have one just called The Way of Life. It's just, it's just the kingdom culture lived practically, practically in a local church. So, do you get an idea for a book based off of messages you're preaching, or do you get? Is, you, is it kind of like a culmination of the things that God's speaking, and you just put it in a book, or does the Lord say, "I want you to teach this"? I've had both happen. Combination. I had the Lord speak to me uh, in a pastor's prayer meeting. He interrupted. He interrupted the prayer meeting and spoke to me. Mm -hmm. said, you're to write a book on the goodness of God. On oh, my goodness. Yeah. God said, or somebody? On the, God spoke to me and said, you're to write a book on my goodness. So that was the only time I got in a direction like that. The other times, it just kind of bubbles up and you start yeah. writing and, and he starts confirming. You know? so, I, I have a yeah. confession to make. Yes, go ahead. I, I have one of your advanced copies of When Heaven Invades Earth. Oh, do <gasps> Yes. No he way. sent it to Randy. Oh, really? And, and he read it, left it on his desk, and I snaggled it. I have it. You stole it? Yeah. <laughs> I just <laughs> felt... <laughs> you didn't confess your sins, man. It was just a stack of papers. Oh, yeah. Oh. I think, he, I think he actually let us read it. Yeah, there's so know? many errors in there. Oh, man, I, I have it. He should grow went yeah. through that with a red pencil and, <laughs> and saved my bacon. It wasn't like yeah. the you know, original like bound. No, I think it was like, no, you know, no. print out, you hand it in. Yeah. And he was like, hey, interns. Because at that time I was just traveling with him, yeah, and I hung on yeah. to it. Yeah, oh, that's. I cool. didn't want to give it back. Yeah, you're. You, so the message is like like that little snippet. These things are are affecting the church around planet Earth. I mean, I was in Tasmania, and you're yeah. hearing the messages. You know, I was in. You go anywhere, right. and you hear the message. Did you ever think, like in a million years, that God would take the, those messages and spread them out as far as no, no, as He thought? So. Yeah. No. It's. It's been so beautiful to watch. I, 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 uh, I'll, I'll share one thing and then we yeah. can do whatever, but I, 1999, I was saved two months. I ended up in Massachusetts at, at, I believe it was the first conference that you had ever done with Randy. And it was, it was in, gosh, it was in somewhere in, um, somewhere in Massachusetts. I think it was near, near a church, uh, that your brother ran or something like that. And it was about four or 500 people there. And I was saved two months. I walked in, and Randy introduced you, and and he said, "This you don't know this man, but I know him. His anointing will eclipse mine." And he introduced you Whoa. at the church like that, and it was the only time I've ever seen this. And you got up and you shared, and I and I remember you sharing on like a road runner. You shared about a plant. Do you know? What I'm, you remember the message? That you shared about a plant that you would dump your coffee in. And, and, and I, I don't know if, if, where you can even find these teachings, but they were, they, they, they were what I cut my cheek on. And, uh, and I saw people, people would stand up and they would just run out of the service screaming. It was like it, in awe of the message and they, and they went out and just armfuls of product into their, and there wasn't even somebody managing the bookstore. And the reason why I know is because I ran out there, grabbed stuff. And, uh, and you, you, you said to people, you said, you have the right these are these have a copyright on them. This is you know ninety nine. You have the right to copy them, and uh, we had a tape duplicator. And I just remember duplicating them every night. I would listen to those messages, and and it was even back then you could see that the hand of God was yeah. was on these words. Like you, you I, I had never witnessed such words cut to the heart of people and meet people exactly where that that tension was in the spirit. They they knew it. They were feeling it, but they never had words or a message to yeah. kind of connect all the pieces. Wow. Yeah. It's the only time I've ever seen that in 17 years of full-time ministry. Wow. 
Yeah, it was so beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Very cool. You were there then, huh? I was seeing two months, I was sleeping in the hotel floor no of somebody that I had met outside the hotel because I didn't have any money. I just wanted, I knew that I wanted to be there. I needed more of God. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't, That's don't something. do that, anybody watching. <laughs> yeah. It's not uh, wisdom to sleep in strangers' hotel room floors, but I wanted God. Hey, and and I ended up, I ended up being That's that so first cool. one. 1999, it was like October, yeah. uh, October, November, 99. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, amazing cool. conference. Yeah, come on, beautiful. Bill, I just want to talk quickly about your kids. Mm -hmm. um, we read that our kids are a bit younger. Yeah. Your kids are a bit older. But, and what they've done. Mm. Bethel Music. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, it's amazing. Eric running the church. Yeah, it's Like amazing. your daughter, I see you watch her on YouTube, sing yeah. and worship. I mean, you used to be a worship leader too. I mean, that's crazy. Is, it, is that ever going to come back? Bill ever going to pick up the guitar again and lead us <laughs> in a song? I mean, you've led us in songs before. Yeah. Just I like acapella. Yeah. Oh, you, you piano. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. Wow. But on, just as a dad, I mean, that, how does that feel to have your kids? Oh, goodness. And Bethel Music's like yeah, it's global. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, yeah, label, everyone's listening. It's, like, yeah. it's blown up. Yeah, the, the, the size of Bethel Music is stunning. <laughs> but what they're writing is what rocks me. Right. Yeah, come on. They are, they are tapping into some rich, rich... Yeah. Truths, you know, that just I'm so thankful, so thankful. I'm so thankful for the lives of the people yeah. that are writing this stuff. You know? Yeah. There there is this authentic group of people yeah. that love Jesus with all of their heart and they keep each other accountable. Yeah. And there's a hundred plus of them in this community <laughs> of Yeah. You know, these, You're raising big people yeah, up there too. Yeah. I mean how many big Amazing artists that, yes. are, like you said, are authentic so and genuine yeah. in their faith. And then there's Jesus culture. There's another whole stream of yeah. another. There's two music movements yeah. that yeah. have come out of Bethel. Like, that's just that actually was that's a part crazy. Of music at, 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 at the beginning, yeah. The beginning, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's big yeah, enough now amazing. to be two. It's like crazy. Yeah, they're yeah they're doing such a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus culture, their impact is great in Bethel and the whole. As yeah, a, how does it feel as a dad? Oh, it's amazing. You know, you, you just. You just become so thankful. You know, you know the things that you did that were right, but even when you did, when you can trace it back and say, I did this, it's the Lord that amplifies the effect. Yeah. You know, in other words, it's all grace. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Grace. Okay. It's the grace Thank of you, God. Jesus. I mean, you yeah. want to do, you want to do the right thing. You want to, you want to be responsible. I, you know, I did put family first. You know, I, I didn't want to be successful. Everywhere else on the planet, and fail at home. Come on. So that was my that was my main deal. I, I purposed uh, early on. I my children have to pay a price for who I am. Yeah. I can't control that. I have no control of the price they pay. So I, I, do, I don't understand. What, what, they have to pay a price just right. because they are the son of oh the yes pastor in town. Yes. Okay. You know, whatever. Yep. They have to pay a price. I can't control that. I can control the blessings they receive because of who I am. So I have to make sure reward always surpasses price. Yeah. So if you, if you maintain that, you, you see the price they have to pay, then you make sure the blessing is more. Yes. Right. Always let the blessing be more. If, if the blessing is more, then they won't grow up hating ministry, hating the church. And they won't be in lack. Yeah. 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 And they'll, they'll know that there is abundance in the kingdom, but there's a price to be paid. Yes. Well, that's the tough lesson of life. You get that when you've done well. Yeah. You know, Jesus said, Mark 10, he says, I'm going to add 100 times as much back into your life with persecution. So in other words, I'm going to give you more than necessary, but it will cost you. Yeah. And so if you can keep the abundance in tension with the price, then you'll do good. Wow. <laughs> so just keep that alive in the home and just do good. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's funny. I was going to ask that question, but you already answered it. That's, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Um, but the, the one little thing I just want to mention, we'll wrap up soon. Right. But um, the confrontation thing that you mentioned before, yeah. that's the other yeah. thing that we really learned from Bethel. I, in BSSM, yeah. it was really presented to me. Yeah. You know, go get your peace, then confront. And oh, yeah. when I started, when we came back, there was a lot of confrontation I had to do running the whole harvest school, you know, yeah. with stuff. But, yeah. but that was really healthy for yeah. Sarah and I. And it was... For me, it's not natural. It's it's difficult for me to confront. <laughs> yeah, and so I have to. But finding that love to, to do it out of love and yeah. finding a peace, it was a great like guidelines for me yeah. to actually 
I'm actually, it's more loving for me to confront than to not confront you. Yeah. So I'm going to do it. Yeah. It gave me the motivation. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Yeah. yeah. So that was a... Yeah, if it doesn't hurt you to confront someone, don't do it. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. If it, doesn't Say cause, if it doesn't cause you pain, don't do it. You'll abuse them. Wow. That's a good word. Gosh, that's a sailor right there. Yeah, somebody tell me that 40 years ago it's probably saved my life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you for telling us now. <laughs> Thank you for telling me now. I'm going to change the way I do everything. Yeah. <laughs> and more importantly, it saved other people's lives right. <laughs> from me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not good at that either. I'm, I'm not good at it. But it has to be done. So yeah. Yeah. if you love people, it's what you do. Exactly. And I suppose... Just getting back to this whole sustainable thing, you know, translating revival. Because why do we want to translate revival? Because we want it to go on and not yeah, finish. Yeah. Yeah. But also, we don't want things to go crazy with what we're running because it'll finish too. Yeah. yeah. Totally. That yeah. confrontation is an essential part of that. You were saying. Yeah. Have you got any more wisdom about that? Not about how to confront, but just how important that is. You know, to to, to confront stuff, to stop stuff when it's. My, ungodly or, or my you approach, get a gut feeling about it. Yeah, my, my approach is confrontation is important, but confrontation most of the time can be done honorably. Yes. Only when, only when people are in out and out rebellion and refuse to listen do you intensify the pressure, so to speak. Like Matthew 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the time, most of the time you can honor a person into repentance. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And so that's a that's a huge part, but the other is the the value system. Uh, they say it takes a child seven positive comments to recover from one negative. <laughs> so there's a seven to one ratio. So if my comments to you are one on one, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, then I've robbed you of what I can put into your life. And um, our, our encouragement should be greater yeah. than our correction. Yeah. Sometimes encouragement actually is correction in that it, it pours into the right thing. Right. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, self-control, Danny Silk describes it something like this. He said, self-control is when you've said yes to one thing so completely you have nothing left over to offer, say yes to anyone yeah, else. So, so the whole deal is, I'm not fighting this temptation. I have nothing left to give it. I've said yes to this so completely. Yeah. So self-control isn't saying no to a thousand options. Yeah. It's saying yes to one so completely. There's nothing left for the thousand options. There's no juice for anything else. Yeah. 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 yeah totally. Well, Bill, listen, yep. I know you, you're getting ready to, to mm -hmm. share tonight, mm -hmm. and we want to yep. let you. We yep. just got to finish awesome with time. four quick, it's just four funny questions we finish. Oh, oh yeah, I remember. Fun, yeah, fun I'm sorry. Questions. Oh, all right. You ready? All right, I think so. Do you remember any of them? Uh, what's your favorite movie? Yes. Yeah, I remember that. You one. can ask that. Bill, do you have a favorite what's movie? Favorite? Do you have a favorite one? I don't. Off the top of your head? I don't. But I like, I like espionage. I like, you know, spy stuff. I'm, yeah. I'm not into science fiction stuff much. My yeah. wife likes that. But, you know, Italian job. I like stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. that the, the, born, the born movies. Yeah. Oh, delicious. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Great. I love it. <laughs> Super fun. That's so. the only one I remember. I've yeah. only, you've only asked me them once. If you could do a different profession, just. What would it be? Ooh. Just for just, just, there's nothing else I want to do. Come on. Um, as a kid, I wanted to play professional baseball, so that was my only only goal. Wow. Yeah. Childhood and early. That was somebody else's answer the other day. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. Yeah, that was it. The, and the Italian job we came up the other day with that missionary <laughs> and the baseball. <laughs> How funny is that? Do, uh, do you have a favorite sound? Ooh. No, I, I don't, but I like a lot of sounds. What's one you, what's I, like, one you like? I love uh, a good saxophone. Oh, yeah. I love, um, <laughs> to, to me, the two instruments that are most similar are drums and a violin, because a bad one stands out so well. Yeah. So <laughs> That's awesome. I've never heard that before. That's awesome. I'm going to steal are, that one. They're the most similar, because when they're bad, they're, yeah, they're, 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 just, they're just awful. Yeah. <laughs> I like, I like that. I like that. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love a good violin. I love a good lead guitar. I love, I mean, yeah, I like, I like all, all almost all of them. I think I like all, all the musical instruments, the sounds. So. Come on. I love the sound of the ocean. 
Yes. Yeah. That came up the other day yeah. too. Oh my gosh. That one. Put it all on a water, phone. moving water has all the sounds in the scale. Really? That's why it's so soothing, yeah. Oh my gosh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. How amazing is that? Yeah. In the end, Bill, everything's said and done. This <laughs> body is We're up gone. Hand. Yes. Yeah. You're going up to heaven. Yeah, it's so a long time. You're going to be at the pearly gates. You know you're going to meet Jesus face to face. Okay. What's the first thing you want to hear him say to you? <laughs> well done. Welcome home. Welcome home. Yeah. Wow. So, awesome. There's one more question I want to ask. Bill, what do you want it to look like once you're there and you're with Jesus? What do you want Bethlehem to look like once you're there? Mm. What, what, do you want, what do you want to see from heaven? I just want to see that we... See, we're, we're praying on earth as it is in heaven. So that has to be practical if it's going to have impact. It has to, there has to be a way to do the economy. There has to be a way to do business. There has to be a way to do medicine. There has to be a way to be creative and arts entertainment. There has to be a way to do this stuff. So I'm hoping that we can really tap some insights. So we're, what we do in the medical field and entertainment, all these realms, they actually mirror another world. And if we can tap that, then we have we have true transformational influence. That's what I want. Come on. Thank you so yeah, much, yeah. Papa Bill. You are That's a Papa. Thanks, thanks. thanks thank for being you such so a father. Thank you very much for Iris. We just we yeah. just love you massive. Yeah, and you father yeah. so yeah. many. I don't yeah. you, you probably I don't know whether you know it, but you do my wife sees you as a father. Like you father so many by what you carry and and we think of your faithfulness too. It, and that's an encouragement to so many just to know that's Papa cool. Bill's still walking yeah. faithfully that helps us yeah. to go yeah come on yeah. so yeah. and you're carrying so much and you travel so much and you, you sacrifice so much in your life we see that and we realise that and, and your faithfulness stands out and so, so thank you come on, thank you you're welcome it's awesome <laughs> well guys there you have it live in Africa with Papa Bill and uh, if you want got any comments leave them below and we will see you next time for Iris After Hours Ciao. See you guys. This podcast is presented by Iris Global. For more information or to support the work of Iris Global, please visit us online at irisglobal.com.